If you own ColecoVision, you already own a powerful state-of-the-art computer that gives you the arcade experience with the newest arcade games like Donkey Kong Jr., Looping, Pepper 2, ColecoVision. The only system you'll ever need. ColecoVision, the Connecticut Leather Company Industries' second-generation home video game console that was released in 1982. The goal of this system was to provide a closer experience to more powerful arcade systems in the home, especially when compared to competitors such as the Atari 2600 and even the Atari 5200. Overall, around 145 total games were released on ROM cartridges for this system between 1982 and 1984. The ColecoVision was discontinued in 1985 when Coleco decided to withdraw from the video game market after suffering heavy losses from the video game crash in North America. It has again almost been two years since I have featured this console on the channel, and that seems strange considering that it won in my video against the Atari vs. ColecoVision. Since the time of that video, my collection has expanded greatly. As I've been able to find many more titles to play on this system, I felt that sometime I should return to the system and showcase more of the games. Well, that happens to be today. One thing I should note is that I will not be including any games that were not made specifically for ColecoVision. Even though this system can play Atari 2600 games via an adapter, which in itself is crazy to think that a video game company came out with an accessory that lets you play their competitors' games, those games will not be included in this list. And here are the contenders for 10 essential games you should own for your ColecoVision. Also, one thing to note before we start getting into the gameplay is that if you think back to my ColecoVision review and my ColecoVision vs. Atari 5200 videos, I have a hard time capturing footage from this system. And that's partially due to the fact that it is using RF out, but the other part of that is there's actually something wrong with my console. It definitely needs some restoration work in the future, but since it still works good enough for now, I don't think I'm going to go ahead and do anything currently in that regard, so I don't play this system that often, so it's not really a huge priority for me. So due to the fact that emulation is not really an option for this, I am going to have to use original hardware, which I'm usually more than willing to do, but it definitely doesn't look as good when it's on modern displays, especially when it's upscaled into 4K. So keep in mind that when you are seeing solid backgrounds that look like they have a texture to them or you see this interference, that's definitely due to the RF connection on my console, and that's not really what the games were really meant to look like, it's just how they look like because of my console. Oh yes, and before we get into the gameplay, I also want to remind you that this is not a ranked list. I have the criteria for what makes an essential game popping up over here on the side, but it's also available in greater detail in my 10 essential games for the Atari 2600 video, which was the first in this series. So if you want to go back and take a look at that, it may help it make more sense why I chose the games that I did for this video. Well, Donkey Kong, I think, has to be included, as this system was designed to play Donkey Kong as close as they possibly could to the arcade version in the early 1980s. But this game also holds up well today in terms of its gameplay. And in terms of getting close to the arcade version, this is as close as it gets for this generation. The only thing I will note is that they can't really make it as accurate, because the arcade machine uses a vertical monitor, and here they have to redesign the game to fit a 4x3 aspect ratio. However, to tell you the truth, I didn't really notice that when I was playing this game. There were a couple of times where I noticed that the sprites per scan line limit was reached as I noticed some flickering, although on my footage it'll just look like it disappears because the capture device was running at a slower frame rate. But I will say, undoubtedly, if you have a ColecoVision, this is a really a must-have title for your system. And going right along with that, I would also recommend Donkey Kong Jr. This game is very similar to Donkey Kong, however, there is a switch in the game mechanic where you must climb on vines, 
And this time, Mario, or Jumpman as he was known back then, is the enemy and he has captured Donkey Kong and you are trying to free your father. Whenever I play this game, it seems to hook me in, so the gameplay is definitely there, and the graphics and sound are again very close to the arcade counterpart of the early 1980s. And I don't know if it's because I enjoy seeing some of Nintendo's early properties on several different systems before they came to the US with their own console, but time and again I still agree that this is an essential game for your collection if you own this system. It provides a good introduction to what the system is capable of, and its gameplay style is universal enough to where anyone can pick up and play. Now here's a game that I have been told I need to include in other console reviews, but it isn't until this console where I actually enjoyed the game when ported to the home console. This is Zaxxon, which was originally made by SEGA as an isometric shooter arcade game. In this game, the player pilots a ship through a heavily defended space fortress. The object of the game is to hit as many targets as possible without being shot down or running out of fuel which strangely is replenished when you blow up the fuel containers. I guess somehow it refuels your ship that way. And although the background does not scroll as smoothly as its arcade counterpart, this game is actually pretty fun and that does not inhibit your gameplay. Of course for me, this game is challenging because of its isometric perspective. It really takes you a while to get used to where your shots are going to land and where enemy obstacles and aircraft are coming from due to that perspective. Overall, this is a pretty solid port, especially when considering the limitations of this console, and I would definitely recommend a pickup if you can find it for the ColecoVision. Next we'll take a look at Venture which is a fantasy-themed action game released in arcades in 1981 by Exidy. The goal of Venture is to collect treasure from a dungeon while you play as a round smiley face named Winky. Although in the overworld maps on the ColecoVision version, you are just a very small square pixel. However, that is only until you enter one of the rooms and you become your full self. The first home port of this game was released on the ColecoVision in 1982 as a launch title but it was then ported to the Atari 2600 and the Intellivision after this. But in my opinion, this is the better version. This game performs very well on the ColecoVision, and I enjoy playing it a lot even still to this day. Reviewers of the time noted that the gameplay style of this game was kind of out of step with the rest of the industry at that time, and I think that only works to this game's benefit, as there is nothing else quite like it on this system. Yeah, the graphics and sound are really dated, but the gameplay is there to the point where I think a lot of people will be able to look past that. So I would definitely recommend this as an essential title for your ColecoVision. Next we're going to take a look at the game Ladybug, which is an insect-themed mace chase video game in the style of Pac-Man that was produced by Universal Entertainment Corporation and released in arcades in 1981. While its gameplay is similar to Pac-Man, the main change in the gameplay is that there are gates that can be used that will change the layout of the maze. Other than that, the goal is to eat all the flowers, hearts, and letters in the maze while avoiding the other insects. The player is represented by a red, yellow, and green character resembling a ladybug, while the enemy insect's appearance varies by level. There's a border around the maze that acts as a timer. Each time the timer runs out, a new enemy is released into the maze. And as you progress through stages, the speed of the timer increases. Unique to this version on the ColecoVision, completing special puts the player into a bonus level, known in-game as a vegetable harvest, where the goal is to consume as many randomly placed vegetables within the fixed time limit. I ended up really liking this game on this system. It definitely works in lieu of an official port of Pac-Man to this system, and I do feel that the twist in the gameplay is a bit different enough to still keep it interesting and not feel like just another Pac-Man clone. Next we'll take a look at Gorf, which was an arcade game released in 1981 by Midway Manufacturing. The game itself is actually an acronym for Galactic Orbiting Robot Force, 
It is a multiple mission fixed shooter with five distinct modes of play, essentially making it five games in one. However, due to copyright issues with the Galaxian mode, that part of the game was removed from almost all of the home ports, including this one on the ColecoVision. The first stage, called Astro Battles, is clearly a clone of Space Invaders. It is the only mission that takes place on Earth instead of space. But just like in Space Invaders, a group of enemies attack in formation while the player is protected by a force field that switches off temporarily when the player's shot passes through it and is gradually worn away by enemy fire. Defeating all enemies in this stage leads you to Laser Attack. In this mode, the player must battle formations of enemies, each containing different enemies that attempt to dive bomb the player, while another fires single laser beams. And again, defeating all enemies takes you to the Space Warp Zone. This mission takes place in kind of a wormhole, where enemies fly outward from the center and attempt to either shoot down or collide with the player's ship. If I had to pick another arcade game that this reminds me of, I would have to say it vaguely resembles Tempest. And finally, in the last stage, known as Flagship, the flagship is protected by its own force field, and it flies back and forth firing at the player. To defeat it, the player must break through the force field and destroy the ship's core. If a different part of the ship is hit, the player receives bonus points and that part breaks off. What kept me interested in this game was probably the fact that it resembles several different arcade games all combined into one. Each one offers his own challenge that I think will keep players occupied for quite a while, especially if you're a fan of any of these arcade games. And you didn't think I'd let an essential games list go without the game Frogger, did you? I don't think there's enough good I can say about this game on the ColecoVision. Again, I think this game is a good example of how close to the arcade this game console could actually get. This would have been very impressive for me to see back in 1982-1983, and the graphical style, sounds, and gameplay are all really solid and I think something that people will still enjoy today. So again, I would recommend this as an essential game because of just how fun it is to play, and that it performs very well on this system. Pepper 2 was originally released in arcades in 1982, and despite its name, there was no Pepper 1. In this game, there are four mazes per level. Each maze has exits, leading to three other mazes. All four mazes must be completed to advance to the next level. To fill in the maze, the player maneuvers Pepper around different segments of the maze. As Pepper travels, he leaves a zipper. Once he encloses or zips a segment, it fills in and points are awarded. However, if you backtrack, then it unzips. While completing mazes, there are two types of enemies that must be avoided. Roaming Eyes and the Zipper Ripper, who unzips all uncompleted zipped segments by moving over them. The player's one defense is to enclose an area containing a pitchfork, which turns him into a devil for approximately four seconds. At that time, he can go after all of the Roaming Eyes for points, while the Zipper Rippers freeze. There are four pitchforks per maze. I have to say, this game provided a challenge that I was not expecting, and it ended up being a lot more fun than I would have initially thought. So due to that, and due to the fact that this is the only console that got a home port of this arcade game, I would definitely give this one a look if you have the ColecoVision. <laughs> Next, we're going to have a look at Cosmic Avenger, which is a horizontally scrolling shooter. I would say another game that this is closest to would probably be Scramble, which was on the Vectrex. In this game, the player takes control of a spacecraft, with the main objective being to earn as many points as possible by fighting against enemy forces. This is all while the screen automatically scrolls forward across different terrain, causing the player to act fast while destroying enemies and also avoiding obstacles. This game was again another launch title for the ColecoVision, and it is the only system to receive a home port of this arcade title. 
Again, especially if you're a fan of those automatically scrolling shooters of the early 1980s, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this game, and I would definitely recommend it as another essential game. And last but not least, I would recommend Miner 2049er for your ColecoVision collection. This is again one of those early platform video games that were released before Super Mario Bros. would set the standard. In this game, the player's objective is to inspect every section of each mine in search of the evil Yukon Johan while avoiding the radioactive creatures that inhabit the mine. As the player walks over a section of flooring, it fills with color. To complete the level, each section of the flooring must be colored. One thing that was unique about this game is that it had 10 different screens for each of the 10 different levels. However, in the ColecoVision version, there are 11. Comparing that to Donkey Kong, there were only 4 different screens in that game. To add to the challenge, each level is timed and must be completed before the player runs out of oxygen. And in each stage, there is some sort of element that the player must adapt to in order to complete the level in time. I definitely do enjoy this game, as I feel like the ColecoVision was specifically designed for this type of game, and it definitely provides a fun experience on this console. Alright, so there you have it. Those are 10 games I feel are essential if you own a ColecoVision console. I always have to ask this question, what did I miss? There are tons of great games for this system, and I'm sure I didn't get all of your favorites in there. So please leave a comment below what you think should have been on this list, and if I'm going to do a part two, what games should I include on this list? Another thing to keep in mind is that there are games that I wanted to feature on this list, but I couldn't for one reason or another. Let me give you one example is the game Turbo. Turbo requires that steering wheel expansion module, or I guess it's actually a controller you just plug in, and it's only playable with that controller. So even though I feel that game may be essential, especially if you own that steering wheel accessory, I can't feature it in the video because I don't own that accessory. Another game which narrowly didn't make the cut was the game River Raid. And again, I don't currently own that game, so I can't really deem it as essential if I myself don't own it. But that said, that does actually wrap it up for this video. Remember, if you like what you see, please click that like button. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when I make future posts. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and stay tuned because I have more content coming. I will see you in the next one. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please remember to click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.